Hi, I'm Ron Bates, Senior Pastor of The Light Church. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. I hope this message inspires you to love God, love people, and shine His light. Well, good morning, Light family. Why don't you guys stand and worship with us this morning? Hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me 
God of miracles, give him praise. Oh, hallelujah. Man, you know, when we were singing, and we were singing Jesus, and we were singing it over and over, Jesus, Jesus, I just thought about that name. There's something about that name, amen? It's a power, there's power in that name, and I was thinking about how not using the Lord's name in vain, not using God or Jesus in vain, and I was thinking about dynamite. Anybody ever use dynamite? You don't want to use dynamite in vain because there's power in it. You want to have intentionality and a purpose behind it. And when we use his name, there's power in that name. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Give him praise. Welcome to the light. Good to have you here. Merry Christmas. It's the season of Christmas. We celebrate God's gift to us. Good to have you here. Good to have you, those online. Welcome. Yes. Welcome everyone online too. Um, when we were singing this last song, I felt the Lord speak to me and he showed me a vision of uh, just some people with their toes like in the edge of the water, like just dipping your toes in to Christianity and a deeper walk with Christ. And specifically, I also felt that there are some that are being called into ministry, into higher levels of ministry. And it's time to jump in and Come be on. immersed yeah. and to stop holding back. Yeah. Life is very, very short, guys. Jesus was all in for you. It's time to be all in for him. We love you. Amen. That's, it. That's what I got. <laughs> you got to be obedient to what you got. Good. Great to have you here. Hey, man, look at someone and tell them it's going to be the best Sunday ever. Good morning. It is going to be the best Sunday ever. This is Communion Sunday, where we remember what Jesus did for us, what God did for us in sending his son, lived on this earth, died for you and I. When Jesus sat with his disciples, he 
had the Last Supper with them, took communion with them, and he told them to do it in remembrance of him, to remember. Jesus did it with those that he was with. The church did it after him. Paul reinforces it with the church at Corinth, and here we are today doing it as well, remembering what Jesus has done for us. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. by the way, if you're missing the elements, you can raise your hand, the ushers will bring it to you. There we go, we've got a couple. Paul reinforces in this and talks to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23, says this, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. He did it for us. Do this in remembrance of me. When we do this, we are reflecting, we're remembering what Jesus did for me, for you. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, as often as we come together and do this. Do it in remembrance of me, he says. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So what we're doing today is we are remembering and we're making a proclamation of his death and what that means to us, that by his stripes we are healed. We're remembering his love, his sacrifice, his death, and we're also remembering his resurrection and what he's done for us. And he told them to take the bread, which is his body, and eat it. So Father, we thank you this morning for the body of Jesus Christ that was beaten and bruised for us. And as we partake of this bread, as Jesus did himself, we recognize what it is. It represents his body that was beaten and bruised for us to give us healing. We receive healing that you've provided this morning. Then he took the cup and said, take and drink. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed to take away our sin, not just to cover or atone, but to completely remove, to reconcile our relationship, man's relationship with God. Father, we thank you for that, and we give you praise for it as we remember this morning in Jesus' name, and everybody said... Good morning, church fam. I'm Hunter, and this is Hannah. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about some exciting events we got coming up. First, I want to tell you about the Giving Tree Outreach. This is a ministry that allows families in need to sign up their children privately, and other families sign up to shop for these children. You can sign up until December 12th. Ladies, it's time. It's here. We've been waiting for this all year long. Just get to the point. Hannah. I'm building suspense, all right? Get ready for a Radiance Christmas to remember. On December 14th at 6 p.m., Christian artist Tony Mack will be here to get everyone singing and on their feet. This event is coming soon on Blu-ray and DVD and to a light church near you. What are you doing? I told you I was building suspense. And I know what you're all thinking. Will there be food? Well, the answer is yes, my friends. One word. Italiano. You're probably also thinking, man, that's a lot of stuff for this announcement. It's got to be over, right? Ha! Wrong. Two words. Fun door prizes. And a bidding war game you're not going to want to miss. Please note that limited childcare is provided if registered by the Sunday before the event. Radiance Christmas is one of our highest attended events, so don't delay in getting your tickets. Next, we want to invite you and your family to our candlelight Christmas Eve service on the 24th. Yes, finally. I've been waiting for this moment all year long. Hold on, I'll be right back. What are those? They're candles. He said it was candlelight. Those are not the right type of candles. This is not a bring your own candle event. But you said it was candlelight. No, not those type of candles. So, so hold on, you're telling me I spent way too much money at Bath and Body Works for nothing? Yes, that's what I'm saying. <sighs> we will have two services, one at 4 p.m. and the other at 6 p.m. In the midst of this season's busyness, 
Why not take some time to reflect on its true meaning? Come join us at The Light Church and discover the gift of peace that God has freely given to all. There's gonna be live performances, a hot cocoa bar, giveaway for the kids, and Pastor Ron's gonna be teaching on peace. Grab an invite card or two for a friend on your way out. If this is your first time here, we hope you'll make The Light your church home. Be sure to fill out that connect card from the seat back in front of you and drop it off at the info desk. To sign up for any classes and events, go to thelightcf.org or download the Church Center app. God does not ask us to give to him because he is in need of anything we have. In Psalms 50, 12, he says, If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. God is generous, and he wants us to be generous too. We cannot send our money to heaven, but we can give it to win others to Christ. This is laying up treasure in heaven. We're so honored that you choose to give here. You can easily give on our website, on the Church Center app, or you can drop off your donation at one of our giving stations. We love you, Light Family. Now please welcome Pastor Ron Bates to the stage. Hey. Good morning, it's that time, the most wonderful time of the year where we celebrate God's gift, His Son. Give God praise for that. Amen. As mentioned, we're going to have our Christmas Eve service. We're going to be talking about the peace we have through Jesus Christ. And leading up to that, I'm going to be on a three-part series, the most wonderful time of the year. It's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year. By the way, thank Pastor Jim for uh, filling in last week as Ava and I were off Thanksgiving break. Appreciate that. But you know, during that break, uh, my son Ryan and I, we, we took a walk and we were talking about things and th th this idea came up about the, the most wonderful time of the year and this is what it's supposed to be about God and him sending his son, but so many times it's not because how many of you know life happens and things go on, but man, what a wonderful time it is to just reflect on God's goodness and what he's done for us in sending his son uh, for us. And I was thinking about this, and you know, I know it's cliche, but Jesus is the reason for the season. He is, you know, and you know, you, you see all kinds of Christmas things. And Ava and I, during this time, we like to watch Christmas movies. How many of you like Christmas movies? And you know, a lot of Christmas romance movies are out there, you know, and so we watch those. It's always the same thing, though. You know, some, some, overworked woman goes to a small town and then you get this, this guy, good looking guy in a plaid shirt and an old beat up truck. Come on, y'all know the story. It's the same thing over and over and over. And it's about Christmas and they'll say things like, you know, this is what Christmas, Christmas is about. Family and friends and, you know, uh, presents and fruitcake. And listen, I love all those things except fruitcake. I, I like all those things, but it's about Jesus. Come on. And they missed that point, but it's, it's, come on, just give God praise for his son Jesus, amen? So yeah, there's lots of things, but this is, you know, when I think about the most wonderful time of the year, it should be, it should kind of be a reset time to think about what God has done, but so many times we're distracted because of the things that's going on in our life. There's uh, loss, there's, there's loneliness, all different kinds of things. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but... Um, uh, it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year if, if we reflect on God and his goodness. But last week, we had about five people that I know of uh, killed in car wrecks in this area uh, right here. And, uh, you know, it, it breaks my heart to see that during this time or any time. But I was, and I don't normally do this, but I was, it just kind of gripped me. And I was looking on uh, Montgomery County Police Reporter and they showed this one vehicle that had been in this accident where people had lost their lives. And as they, they panned around the vehicle, they showed the back of the vehicle and it had a cross on the back of the vehicle. And when I saw that, it gave me some consolation that even in the midst of this tragedy, we still have hope in Jesus Christ, amen? And, and so, but as we approach this time, just thinking about God's goodness and let's don't miss out on it. And, and if I'm being honest, you know, uh, I guess this is hitting home with me because Ava and I have been really busy in this season with the things we have going on and, and God's just speaking to me to like, don't miss out on reflecting on how good God is, amen? So uh, the most wonderful time of the year, look at Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful. That's his name, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, 
Prince of Peace. And so the word wonderful literally means full of wonder or or cause to be amazed, literally surpassing understanding. We can't figure him out, but he is a wonderful God. Wonderful God with his favor, the hope we have, the love that we have, the peace that we have during this time. And I want to read to you in Luke chapter 1 where the birth of Jesus was announced to Mary by the angel Gabriel. And in verse 26, it says this, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent, to, sent by God to the city of Galilee named David. I love the fact that God sent the angel to Mary. God sought her and found her as he does us, I believe, as well. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, highly favored one. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. The title of this today is Highly Favored. Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting is this. I mean, think about it. She's experiencing this this angel visiting and she's like, what is going on? Then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Somebody give God thanks that we found favor with him. And he goes on and says, and behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. So number one is this, highly favored. Do you feel highly favored? Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we feel like we're not the favorite. We feel like we're an outcast. But can I, I just want you to grab so, hold of something today that God considers you his favorite. Amen? So we need to change our perception of how we see God viewing us. And, uh, you know, Joyce Meyer wrote a book on, about this. And look at this picture here that God's not mad at you. Sometimes we think God's mad at us. If you see this on the shelf, and some, for some reason right next to it is this other book that says, he's just not that into you. But he is. <laughs> he is. It's not a sign from God. He, he is into you. You are his favorite, amen? So no, God's not mad. I love this too. God's favor is constant. We feel like sometimes we've lost his favor. Listen, anytime we go and we come back to God, just like the story of the prodigal son, his favor is always there, amen? So, but what was so special about Mary? When I think about this, I think, look at Mary. The scripture doesn't really tell us a lot about Mary. I mean, when you read about Solomon, the wisest man, and you read about certain kings, and it says there was none found like them before or none after. You read about Daniel and his, his, his friends that, that, that they were, there was none found like them. You don't see that about Mary. And I have to tell you, I like this about the scripture. When it says th- things like this about someone but doesn't give you the details, because if it did, let's just say it said something about Mary, like, like she was the greatest woman and most spiritual or whatever it may be, then, then we'd feel like, well, if we're going to have that kind of favor, we have to live up to that standard. I don't care who you are, you have God's favor. You're highly favored by God. You know, uh, one of our elders here, Ricky, Ricky Martin, he has, if you say, how you doing? He goes, man, I'm blessed and highly favored, one of God's favorites. That's it, he, he is, and you know what? He's been repeating that for so many years. And we need to repeat that. We need to tell ourselves we're not an outcast. God's not mad at us. We are highly favored by God. We need to grab hold of that truth. And believe that we're highly favored by God. And, you know, I think about it. Didn't Mary think that she was highly favored before this? The angel comes and tells her to rejoice. You're highly favored by God. But God chose Mary, sent the angel to her. And we really don't know that there was anything special about her. We know that she was special because she was the mother of Jesus. And, but before that, we just know she was a young girl that was uh, found by God to have Jesus, and said, rejoice, highly favored. I think about the story of Ruth. We know the story of Ruth, and here's someone that is, is not a Jewish, of Jewish descent, and she's married into the family, so to speak, and her husband dies, her father-in-law dies, her brother-in-law dies, and they all, you know, they're all gone, and they got to consider what to do, and she follows her mother-in-law, Naomi, back to her people, and she makes this statement. She goes, your people will be my people, and your God will be my God. And she shows up and she's receiving such favor from Boaz. And by the way, Ruth represents you. It represents us, the church. 
Ruth is a picture of the bride of Christ, and Boaz is a picture of Jesus in this story of Ruth. And so she shows up and receives this favor just by showing up. And she, in, in uh, Ruth 2.10, it says this, at this, at the favor that she received, she bowed down with her face to the ground. She asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me? And, and I think about that. Have you ever thought about that with God? Why? Why do I receive such favor from God that you notice me? Let me just tell you this this morning. If you get nothing else, God notices you. And one of the things that she said that I think is amazing, she says, why do you notice me, a foreigner? A foreigner. And I'm, I'm so thankful that God chose Mary and through Mary came Jesus and came to God's people, the Jew, and then now to the Gentiles, us foreigners. What's so special about us that God made, uh, no, took notice of us? Because God loves you that much. Amen. Give him praise. Come on. Praise. You are highly favored. Boaz's reply in verse 11 says, I've been told about all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and your mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know. And when you think about this, all she really did, Ruth, all she really did was to make a decision to go after God and his people. And when we make a decision to go after God, you know what we find? We find his favor because we chose to go towards him. Number two is this, you have found favor. See, we think that favor finds us or that we think that here, favor found you. We think that we have to look for it, but God is pursuing you. I love the fact that God pursues us. God's not trying to withhold his favor. Matter of fact, he sent his son from his throne in heaven to earth to take on this flesh to reconcile us to him. God pursues us. So his favor found us. It's his desire for us to discover his favor. The shepherds were in the field keeping watch over their, their flock and then the, the angels came to them, found them to let them know good tidings of great joy. I love the fact that God's favor pursues us. Matthew 13, 44, in the, describing the kingdom of heaven says this, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Look at verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Can you see the picture of God pursuing you in this? I remember years ago, I was about 13 years old, and I had a dirt bike. And there was a field out in front of our house where I would ride my dirt bike, but there was also a, a creek or a bio and I would ride my dirt bike on this bio, and it went for miles. And I don't know how many miles, but it went for miles. And I'd go out and I'd just ride. And so I was riding my dirt bike way down this, I don't know how many miles I was, but something happened to the bike and I couldn't get it to restart. It had a kickstarter on it. And, and so it's getting dark, and so I found myself on this long trail, and I had to push my bike back miles up and down on this trail, up and down. And I was wore out, I was tired, it's getting dark. And I got to the crest of this one hill, and, in the, in the, and it was getting dark, but out of the silhouette, I could see a silhouette in the darkness of a man coming towards me. And, and as I got to the top of that hill, I realized it was my dad who had came to, uh, come to find me at night, because he's, I, I wasn't home, he's wondering where I'm at, he found me, and I was so glad to see him. He, he found me, and, and we got my bike started, he helped me, we pushed it down a hill and got it restarted. And then he jumped on the bike and I was, we're headed back home and he wasn't used to riding on the bike and I was going kind of fast through there. He finally decided I had enough. He come to a corner, he jumps off and he says, you go on, I'll walk. <laughs> but I think back on that time where my earthly father pursued me to find me. He had no idea where I was. I, mean, I guess he had some idea, but he found me. Now this is before cell phones, so it wasn't like I could pull my cell phone out and just call my dad. So I didn't know if he was coming. He couldn't call to find out where I was. So you can imagine the excitement when I saw help on the horizon. You know, cell phone, we didn't have, I think a telegram had just been invented. And so I couldn't call him. But I thought about that. Man, what a wonderful feeling to see my dad come and pursue me and find me, my earthly father. What a greater feeling to know that my heavenly father pursues me. And sometimes at the crest of our trial and our trouble that we're facing, we get to the top and we see an image of our father like the prodigal son coming towards him. Give God praise, amen? His favor found us. 
Another illustration in Luke 15, 4. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. My dad didn't put me on his shoulder. And goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you that in the same way, there would be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Give God praise for his favor. You're highly favored and his favor finds you. Point number three is this. God is with you. You see, in this season that we're in, it's supposed to be the most wonderful time of the year, but sometimes people are not excited and happy because they feel like God's not with them. They feel alone and lonely, but we need to understand that no matter where we go, God is with us. The angel said to Mary, having come in, rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you and he's with us as well. We have to understand that. Told her there's no need to fear. You're not alone. Rejoice in this. Matthew 123 says this, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God sent his son to be with us. And what I love about God's favor is it's always present. And when we turn to go to him, we receive his favor. Sometimes we feel, may feel like we do things to lose his favor, but I'm telling you, when we turn and repent, when we look to God, his favor is always there for us. Amen. He will never leave us nor forsake us. You see, with man, we can lose favor sometimes, and sometimes we compare man to God, but God's favor is always available to us. As a matter of fact, I think I might have lost some favor this week with man, and I need to probably restore that. I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. Out at our property that, that we have until it's complete, we have a porta can out there. Y'all know what a porta can is, right? We have a, a porta potty out there. So, but I also happen to have a rubber snake. And <laughs> see, y'all thought the same thing I did. Porta can, rubber snake. It, they go hand in hand. I had this idea. I had this flash of brilliance that said I could hook this rubber snake onto the door and throw it under the portican so, so when somebody comes and opens the door, the snake is coming out at them. That might be fun. That might be a lot of fun. So, so I thought about this. And you know, I, I, it, the thing is, I only meant this for my friends, you know. It happens to my, you know, people I really care about. <laughs> so, matter of fact, I have a picture of it. So, oh, check this out. So, this is what it looks like when you're inside. And you look, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So, now, so I have it out there. And so, but now the people that come to clean this porta can, they come on Fridays, usually. So Friday, I had the thing off and it's in, in my truck, you know. And then, uh, matter of fact, there was somebody over at the house working, and Ava comes out and says, Hey, have you seen Ronnie's snake? And I'm like, Why do you do that? If you're going to pull a trick on something, you don't let them know, hint, hint, there's going to be a, a surprise. You just got to kind of let these things happen. But the, the individual said, yeah, I'm glad I didn't because I'm deathly afraid of snakes. And I thought, that's a great opportunity. <laughs> so this is yesterday. I rushed out there and I put my snake on there and threw it under there and I left. I forgot about it. Well, a few hours later, I come back and he tells me, man, you should have been here. They came to clean that porta can. And you know, here's the thing about it. I don't have to, so people ask me, you got a camera set up on it? No, it might not be a good idea to put a camera on a port again. But <laughs> I don't have to be present to enjoy it. I get just as much thrill hearing about it. So he's telling me that somebody, all he heard was this loud scream and cussing going on, shout. And said he was mad. He said, why is that funny? I don't know, but it is. He was so, he slammed the door and he left, says, I'm not cleaning it. So I lost favor with, I'm going to have to make a phone call this week and tell him how bad I feel about it, <laughs> you know, and hopefully I'll receive favor and they'll clean my port again. <laughs> uh, so. But God is full of favor. <laughs> His mercies are new, what? Every morning. John 1, 14, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. He's with us. 
We have seen his glory and the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace. That means favor, Kairos. And truth, he's full of favor. And I was thinking about this too, that people that may feel like, God, where are you? Where are you? He's with you. Do not fear, rejoice, highly favored one. God is with you. Psalm 139, seven, it speaks to this. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. And verse 13 goes on, you formed me, and you, for you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works. And listen to this, and that my soul knows very well. Come on. We need to know that we're highly favored no matter what we're facing. We cannot run from his favor and his grace. Point number four, the last point is this. Faith receives favor. Doubt rejects favor. I think about this. God's favor was presented to Mary. God's favor was there. And, you know, I wonder, did she have the opportunity or could she have rejected it? No, you got the wrong girl, not me. I don't want to do that, you know. But she didn't. She received it by faith. You think about this incredible event that she experienced and had this opportunity to receive it. Receive it. And what we do a lot of times is we, we start to reason ourselves and try to figure out God instead of just embracing what he has for us. I think about the man at the pool of Bethesda that was there for 38 years, lame, and couldn't walk. And Jesus asks him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be whole? What a question. Well, I've been here this long, and it says immediately when Jesus spoke to him, it says here in John 5, 8, Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk, and immediately, everybody say immediately. Immediately, immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. He walked that quickly. And I think about, it, are we reluctant to receive God's favor sometimes? There was no argument, no debate, no doubt. He just acted according to God's word whenever he spoke to him. And so, are we reluctant to receive favor? Who wants a Chick-fil-A gift card? Okay, some of you just now raised your hand. Yellow shirt, say, come here, get it. Here you go, I got it, see, I'm not kidding. Favor, right here, give God praise. Dang, here you go, enjoy. Not today, they're close. Anyway. Uh, so here's the thing. I say, who wants a gift card? Who wants a gift card? And I look around, and some people immediately, they receive. Some people are thinking about it. What did he just say? <laughs> He's giving away things. Usually church trying to get your stuff. No. It, and sometimes it's just a little slower to process, right? Figure out the angle. Is he going to have me get up on stage? By the way, come here. No. Get up on stage. But do we do that with God? God says something to us, right? By his stripes, you are healed. What's the angle? Come on. Or do we receive it? Do you want to be made well? Yeah, I'll take it. Come on. Are you with me? Faith receives his favor. And I think about Mary's dilemma, if you will. You know, sometimes we're, we're skeptics and we're processing. It's unusual. That was unusual for a pastor in the middle of a sermon. Hey, who wants chicken flake? So we're kind of like, what? I think it was pretty unusual when an angel appeared to Mary and said, rejoice, highly favored one. Probably took her a minute to process. Wait a minute, how can this be? I don't get it, right? So the angel answers her, Luke 1.34. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Doesn't make sense, since I do not know a man. She understood biology. She understand, understood that it, it just didn't make sense. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now think about this for a minute. Rejoice, highly favored one. And you're gonna have a child and she's like, uh, I don't get it, how? And here's the angel's explanation. Well, the Holy Spirit, who she probably didn't know, okay, is gonna overshadow you. And by the way, the one that's gonna be born is gonna be the son of God. It's gonna be the king of God's people, right? 
Oh, okay. Since you made it more clear, <laughs> now I can wrap my mind. Are you kidding me? What kind of answer is that? She should have been more confused than she was before. So think about it this way. It wasn't the explanation that convinced her, right? Because she still had to have faith to understand that. Faith receives God's favor. But I love God. Lord, help my unbelief. Yes, I believe, but help me. Help me some, Lord. Give me some help here. I love the fact that the angel that was sent by God, Gabriel, helps her out a little bit because she had a cousin, Elizabeth, that was barren, that couldn't have children. And so in God's grace to help. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative has also conceived a son in her old age. Think of it. She's beyond childbearing years. And this is now the sixth month. She's in the sixth month for her, who was called barren. Everybody knew it. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, at this, at this, Mary said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord, I'm at your service. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel left. Let me tell you what she did not say. Let it be to me according to my natural understanding. Let it be unto me according to science. Let it be unto me according to physics. Let, no, let it be unto me according to your word. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Faith receives God's favor. And that this, the angel left, I believe she conceived when she believed. Come on. I believe that a seed was deposited the moment she believed that God saw her faith and she received what God had for her, her favor. Amen? Faith receives God's favor. What I'd say to us this morning is to let your faith receive God's favor in your life. Let's have those same words come off our lips. Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Just like you said it. I take you at your word, Lord. Just like you said it. I receive that. Even though my mind doesn't fully understand it, I know you. And that nothing is impossible with you. Amen. Give him praise. Give him praise. Would you stand with me? What favor do you need? God's favor is presented to you, just like it was Mary. Just like it was to Mary. His favor is presented to us. All we have to do is embrace it. And when we believe, we can see, we receive it. You're highly favored. You're not alone. So what do you need? Provision, health, peace, restoration, let these words come off of your lips, out of your heart, as Mary did. Lord, let it be unto me according to your word. Would you bow with me? Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And because of that, Father, this is the most wonderful time of the year that we can celebrate your gift to us. Father, your word tells us that you so loved us that you gave your only son, that whoever believes Father, if we believe, we'll not perish. We'll have an everlasting life, Father. We believe in our heart. We confess with our mouth, Father. It's by faith. It's something we can't wrap our natural mind around. So how can this be? Ephesians 2.8 tells us, for by grace, which is charis, love, favor, the kindness of God, you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. We didn't do anything to earn his favor. It's his free gift. Father, let it be unto us according to your word. Father, I pray that as we leave this place this morning, that we walk out of here with an attitude knowing that we have your favor all over. Father, we're highly favored. We're your favorites. Father, and to believe your word and receive that favor. With every head bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've heard of it, but you haven't received him as your Savior. Maybe you've been trying to wrap your mind around it, but, but let me encourage you to have the words of Mary. Lord, let it be 
unto me according to your word, not according to my natural understanding. It's a supernatural event, a transforming of your heart that the Holy Spirit does when we simply yield by faith and say, Lord, I believe, I believe. Romans 10, 9 and 10, if we confess it with our mouth and believe it in our heart, if we believe it in our heart and confess it with our mouth, we will be saved. Every head bowed and eyes closed. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Ron, I, I believe and I want it to be according to me according to God's word. I believe with all my heart that God exists, that he loved me, that he sent his son. And I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to pray for you right where you are. But would you just acknowledge that right now with an uplifted hand so I'll know where you are? Say, so, Pastor Ron, that's me. I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. God bless you. I see that. God bless you. I receive. Let it be unto me according to your word. Stop trying to wrap your mind around it. It's a supernatural event. One more time. I don't want to miss anybody. Pastor, pray for me. I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Maybe you're here and you feel like you've lost God's favor. Maybe you feel like you've done something. and say, You know what? I, I, I've, I've lost that favor. His favor is still there for you. I say, I want to come back into his favor. I want to come back into his favor. If that's you, would you just lift your hand? I want to pray for you as well. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's all say this prayer together. Say, Father God, I believe with all my heart that you exist, that you love me so much so that you sent your only son, Jesus, to die for me. I take you according to your word that says if I believe that in my heart and confess it with my mouth, I'll be saved. So I repent of all my sins. I receive your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Give him praise. God bless you. Look at somebody and say you're highly favored. What an awesome message. Let's receive his favor. Let's be highly favored. Amen. And all of you who just dedicated your life to Christ, we're going to come alongside you. And those of you who reconnected, all of heaven is celebrating right now and rejoicing with you. We have the prayer partners down here. Please don't leave here today if you have a prayer need for yourself or for someone in your world, your life, that you just want to pray over them. Let's get them covered. Let's let the power of prayer move in our lives and the lives of others. And we also have the giving tree. It's that time of year. Be part of that. Let's be the hands and feet. Let's bring some joy to families. And if you're in need, you have small children, also sign up for that too. We'd like to bless you in that area. It's back there in the back. Tammy's back there. Candy's back there. Go see them. And let's bless someone. Father, we just come to you right now and we just thank you for your favor. Lord, we receive it and we thank you for that, for the grace and through faith, we take you at your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Let's leave here today understanding that we are highly favored that you're ready to bestow on us everything that you have for us. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, have a great week.